Hello everyone. Welcome to the second experiment on digital communication lab, which, which will be explained by myself, Dr. Shruti Mondol, Assistant Professor of Jalpaiguri Government Engineering College. Today, the experiment name is Reconstruction from Sampled Signal using MATLAB. In our earlier class, we have performed the first experiment that is the analysis of sampling theorem using MATLAB. That means how can we generate time domain and the frequency domain representation of original signal and sampled signal using MATLAB. Okay. So in this second experiment, we will just want to uh reconstruct the original signal from the from its sampled version okay so the problem is basically same here we can uh, we assume the signal as consists of one hertz and three hertz sinusoidal which is defined by sine 2 pi t minus sine 6 pi t okay so what do we need to do that to reconstruct from its sam sampled signal initially we need to do or we need to create sampled version of message signal so the first part of the program is basically same as the experiment number one where we just created the sampled version of original signal okay so here you can see that uh, we consider same uh, same problem that we consider the total time division is one second and the dif uh, uh, difference between two gap or two time instant is 0 0.002 second and here we define total time span okay and this one is the t is equal to 0 0.02 uh, that means this one denote the sampling period that means we consider here the sampling rate as 50 hertz okay uh, the reason is same that uh, for the as thus uh, our signal that means x is time limited that means it uh, occurred in between 0 to 1 second that's why the spectrum is not band limited that means its spectrum spread beyond 3 hertz okay so for practical reason we have chosen sufficient high sampling rate here we consider 50 hertz sampling rate okay now to create its sampled version we already know we need to use the command down sample and to, uh, how much we want to reduce or uh, how, how much we want to sample that defined by the n factor n factor is the nothing but the ratio of ts by td by uh, using this factor uh, the number of discrete signal will be reducted okay now uh, again uh, after that we need to use again up sample command because this is necessary to uh, forcefully give the value of the signal as zero except the sampling instance okay so where we get the sampling instance the value remains same but others uh, sampling area it should be zero so that's why we need to use this command okay now to observe the first uh, to observe the spectrum we need to use the Fourier transform in case of MATLAB we use the first Fourier transform and the corresponding code is already explained in the earlier lab okay so this one basically we get x FFTU as the Fourier transform of the original signal and now we want to plot it okay so here we plot um, uh, along x axis frequency and y axis is amplitude where you can see that plot between x is f axis and which is already defined in this region maximum frequency minimum frequency and the gap okay 
so let's run first of all then you can see the output okay so here you can see the corresponding spectrum first figure denote the spectrum of the sample signal it is already explained here you can see that when we use the sam sample version the spectrum is shifted into the plus minus fs plus minus 2p so here as we already use the uh, 50 hertz sampling rate so sp spectrum is shifted to uh, plus 50 plus 100 minus 50 minus 100 like this okay so this one is the actually uh, spectrum of the sample signal okay so up to this we have already done in the earlier classes earlier lab okay so now to reconstruct to reconstruct the message signal original message signal from the sampled one what do we have need to do we need to use a ideal low pass filter okay so basically you can see that here uh, the, uh, this portion con this portion actually contain the information regarding the message similarly this area also uh, also contain the information regarding the message this spectrum also this spectrum also this spectrum also so if you somehow difference somehow extract only this spectrum of the total spectrum of the sample signal so obviously that will contain the whole information of the original signal so our objective is basically to extract this spectrum okay which is nothing but the original message signal so for this purpose we need to use a low pass filter so look the function of the low pass filter is nothing it will pass the low frequency signal and it will stop the high frequency signal so for practical reason as this signal is not band limited its spectrum uh, almost spread up to 10 hertz so here we'll use a low pass filter whose uh, bandwidth is 10 hertz okay so so here you can see that first of all we define uh, yeah come, come to here yeah this uh, we define the bandwidth of the low pass filter as 10 hertz so bw is 10 okay now we need to define the transfer function of the low pass filter okay so for transfer function of the low pass filter so uh, from minus 10 to 10 the amplitude or gain of the uh, low pass filter will be 1 and in others area it will be 0 so that uh, ultimately from minus 10 to 10 it will pass and else uh, it will uh, stop the frequency okay so here we just using this function using this command we will define uh, define the transfer overall transfer initially up to uh, define the transfer function initially hlfab is a function that initially we put all the value as zero okay so then from from there we just uh, put the value of one from up from minus 10 to 10 so how do we get minus 10 to 10 so using this logic we will get the minus 10 hertz to plus 10 hertz okay so here we uh, next we plot the transfer function by using plot and corresponding frequency so we get this type of transfer function okay so this is the transfer function of lpf or low pass filter so the uh, okay so in the next section what do you need to do so whenever a signal is passing through low pass filter so if we multiply if we multiply uh, it, uh, with its uh, transfer function then we will get the corresponding output so here the input to the message uh, out uh, low pass filter is x fftu which is nothing but the fourier transform of the original si uh, sample signal so we just multiply uh, multiply it with the transfer function that is h underscore lpf yeah this one is the point was multiplication that means uh, this is the multiplication between two vector so basically this one con this region is a vector or array this one is also array so if you multiply just uh, point to point multiplication so you need to use the star dot star okay so and here is this one is the n factor it has multiplied so n factor is multiplied to adjust the gain of the low pass filter 
okay now so the corresponding output is stored in x receive in this in this variable so if we plot this with respect to frequency so then we will get the spectrum of the uh, spectrum of the output of the low pass filter so here you can see that in figure 3 so let's come into the figure 3 here okay so you can see that here is the figure uh, spectrum of the low pass filter output so obviously the, this one is the spectrum of the original message signal similar to the original message signal okay because uh, in case of original message signal the spectrum is also be, uh, spread beyond 10 hertz like this although its value is very small but it's spread beyond that 10 hertz so it is almost similar to the message signal that means now let's see how much close to the original message signal okay so for this purpose uh, for this for, for this purpose here we need to you uh, need to do the inverse Fourier transform to see the time domain representation of output of the low pass filter the uh, here the output x r c r c uh, v so this one basically the uh, consists of data related with the Fourier transform okay so we need to use inverse Fourier transform so here this one is the basically the uh, command for the inverse Fourier transform and we will use the real time real value and uh, then after re uh, what is the inverse Fourier transform and uh, here we need to use inverse fast Fourier transform so obviously the logic uh, behind this inverse fast Fourier transform will be discussed in the digital signal processing so we just keep it so here just remember that this fun this command is used for the inverse inverse fast Fourier transform okay so whose fast L number of values denote the actually time domain representation of the message signal or we can call it as the reconstructed signal so in the variable x rcv2 the reconstructed signal is stored okay now let's plot the original signal and the reconstructed signal by using this command so in this, uh, so, so that we can compare how much reconstruction has been done using low pass filter so here you can see that corresponding output is here so basically red one is the original signal and this blue one is the reconstructed signal so you can see that it is almost similar to the original signal okay so here remember here we, are, we have used 10 hertz bandwidth low pass filter and this is the ideal case okay so if you increase let's see if we increase the bandwidth okay so if you increase the bandwidth let's see what happen so yeah you can see that the output output is almost similar to the or similar exactly to the original signal reconstructed output is exactly similar to the original one why because here you can see that the output of the low pass filter is uh, reach uh, is uh, spread up to 20 hertz here as the bandwidth is selected as 20 hertz that means uh, more number of spectrum is allowed that means it contains more information more exact information of the original signal so that's why we get the exact information of the original signal as the constructed message okay so i think the uh, you have no confusion regarding the reconstruction of the uh, message signal from the sampled one okay so the process is like we need to first create the sampled version of it to observe the sampled uh, to observe the spectrum of the sampled signal we need to use fast Fourier transform okay so after that we need to extract the spectrum corresponding to the message signal for that purpose we need to use low pass filter okay so whose low pass filter bandwidth is limited to the practical bandwidth of the original signal that means here that is 10 hertz okay now if we uh, now define the transfer function of that low pass filter that means 
from minus b to plus b the gain is 1 else the value is 0 okay now if we multiply this transfer function to the Fourier, uh, first Fourier transform of the original signal uh, uh, first Fourier transform of the sample signal then we get the uh, corresponding output that means we get the only uh, corresponding output that will pass through the low pass filter that means it denotes nothing but the spectrum of the low pass filter okay so here you can see that this is the corresponding output so to uh, to observe the low pass filter uh, sorry to observe the time domain representation of this output of the low pass filter would we need to use inverse Fourier transform here in MATLAB we just use inverse fast Fourier transform to get the reconstructed signal in time domain and after that we can compare that that original signal and the reconstructed message signal are close or exactly or exactly each other if we increase the bandwidth of the low pass filter okay so i hope there will be no problem and if you have any question any query regarding this uh, program please post in the comment section of video or the google classroom okay thank you